I'm going mad. Am I the only one looking at all these flat roof rubber EPDM installations, videos on YouTube and seeing the roof deck in the wrong place? I don't want 10 years out of my roof. I don't even want 30 years. I want it to be there forever. I'll show you the right way to do your rubber roofing for 40 years plus mistakes to avoid. And even if you're on a height restriction, say two and a half meters, a foolproof way to make your flat roof last beyond your years. Now you've painstakingly built your roof joists, you've created your gradient, maybe you used furring pieces or you, you used sloping joists to create your fall. Don't spoil all that hard work by bonding your membrane wrong. Don't do it like these examples here and I'm going to show you why. Now there are a few ways to do your flat roof. There's a cold ventilated roof, there's a warm roof and then there's the insulation hard up against the deck roof which seems to be popular right now. I went through the makeups of each of these in this video here but whichever one you use there's one thing you want to avoid and this one little thing flies against all of the advice that I can find at least about fixing your rubber roof which you're hearing from some of these experts and gurus on the web and on YouTube. For this roof I'm going for a warm roof as you should always if you can as well with the insulation laid on top of the deck but I'm also going to give you the right solution if you're stuck with keeping the roof beneath a certain height perhaps for planning permission or permitted development reasons and your 2.5 meter rule. Now first get the position of your vapor barrier right and ensure that this horizontal barrier then laps into and creates a seal with your vertical vapor barrier but we'll save all the vapor barrier detail for another day. We're focusing here on making our rubber membrane and our roof deck last forever. What we're always trying to block is any vapor, any moisture in this zone here. Get the relative humidity down as much as we can. Why this zone especially? Well, if you think about the temperature, assuming you have your heating on inside, it's gradually reducing as it gets closer to the outside and it simply races lower as it approaches the very outer edge of the insulation. Where warm air meets or changes to cold air, just like our misty windows when my grandmother was cooking roast dinner with the single glazing we had in the house at the time, the vapour content turns into moisture as the temperature drops. And why should we care? Well, that's the thing that's going to kill a roof. Let's look at these examples. Only one of these roofs is built correctly. We have cold roof, warm roof, and a lot of people call this one hybrid roof. And tracing the way the air transfers through these envelopes, just like grandmother's cooking, we can see that our misty windows are going to occur here at the temperature drop off and whether or not our vapour barriers did a great job, they should really be called vapour retarders. There's always going to be some residual vapour in the air as it travels through and it's going to condense here where the temperature changes rapidly. Now for a cold roof, that's okay. Ventilated void is going to suck all that condensing vapour moisture along the voids and out using negative pressure if you've designed your vents properly. But for the other two examples, we've only gone and added in a layer of timber, our OSB or ply roof deck. And over the cooler months, over a period of years, this condensation is going to invisibly rot the timber in the upper side of the composite and you won't know anything about it. The golden rule is never, never have anything timber based on the cold side of the insulation. Now sure you might get three, five, you might even get 10 years before that EPDM rubber to OSB adhesion is spent. But if I'm spending tens of thousands of pounds on a build, really I'm expecting 40 years plus for everything I do. And with these construction material and labor prices, so should you. So all these manufacturers' websites and instructional YouTube videos showing a water-based adhesive going onto the OSB and then rolling an EPDM membrane over it to stick down, these decks are going to rot gradually and the roof is going to fail. Water-based adhesive onto an OSB deck should only ever be used for a cold ventilated roof or where there's no insulation present at all, for example in a shed. Now I know I'll be getting more of the, I've been doing this for years and, and I've never had a problem responses. 
and it's a very difficult thing for me to reply to because it doesn't actually mean anything. Give me some clear physics and data or give me your insurance backed for a year bonded guarantee protecting me even when you go bust or just do it the right way. And talking of the right way, if you go to Belgium, Germany, Netherlands, where this technology is used all the time in their housing, they do a lot of flat roofs, you'll never see OSB or ply on the cold side of the roof insulation. And it's a joke that in the UK, one of the dampest climates in Europe, contractors and suppliers alike are recommending this roof arrangement to domestic customers such as you and me. It's no wonder we've got such an awful housing stock. If you pick up a piece of OSB and put some running water over it, you'll see it displays almost waterproof characteristics due to the amount of impermeable solvents within its composite. So what do you think is going to happen as any small amounts of vapour travel through our insulation and hit that dew point on the outside of our PIR as it travels within the OSB? Well, it's going to condense, turn into moisture, and it's got nowhere to go. Nowhere because it's trapped against this non-breathable composite timber and impermeable glue surface. Welcome to slow and creeping wet rot invisible and invasive, taking decades off your lovely roof and you're completely oblivious since you can only see the underside of the roof deck if you remove the insulation. And why is it then that these warm roof installations are being built with not one OSB roof deck but two? One below the insulation and bizarrely another one above the insulation fixed with a load of conductive metal screws to suck out even more heat. Why would they do that? They do it because it's much easier to roll down EPDM rubber and adhere directly onto a timber deck such as OSB or ply since they can use a water-based glue on the timber deck which is very easy to work with. Without the secondary deck, with no timber, it's a slightly harder system to glue down I suppose. But they're reducing the life of your roof at your expense because it's easier for them and you won't know it since your roof will appear to perform fine for a few years at least. If you can just take one thing from this video, take the fact that in these days of super thick high performance insulation requirements, you should never have any timber product on the cold side of your insulation anywhere within your building envelope, but especially on your roof where the majority of the heat and vapour wants to migrate to. Eliminating any timber on the cold face means adhering our EPDM rubber membrane directly onto our insulation using a solvent-based contact adhesive. And it's a little trickier to do than water-based adhesive, as I said, since you need to apply it on both surfaces. And therefore, perhaps that's the reason these builders don't want to do it. So, if I can't stick my rubber onto my timber deck, what am I supposed to do? Well, first forget your foil faced insulation. You can just peel the foil off like I'm doing here and that's no good. We need to use a different product system. Still with the PIR core, we call it tissue faced, but it's really just a friction based facing to the PIR done in the manufacturing process. So no composite to get peeled off. This then creates a key for the adhesive to bond directly onto the insulation. Kingspan TR27 is one tissue face product you can find, but today I'm using this resistor product. The same performance and thermal characteristics, but also I found it was much easier to get hold of. For our warm roof, we set our tissue faced insulation on our timber deck. Over our vapour barrier, I'm using these 1.2 metre squared sheets since they're going to be easier to handle on the roof and their depth is 150 millimetres to reach the required U value I need to pass building regulations. 120 millimetre works great if you're working out with these regulations. And side note, if you're on a height restriction, shouting, there's no way I can make that warm roof makeup work on a 2.5 metre permitted development restriction. Well, I'm here to tell you, you absolutely can. And in my other video here, I'll show you exactly how to do it in contrast to what all the self-built garden room guys are telling you. Now, aside from condensation, the other big issue with flat roofs is wind uplift through negative pressure. So we need to mechanically fasten our insulation through our deck and into our joists. But we also need to think about thermal bridging. There's not much point sticking a load of expensive insulation over your deck if you're then going to put loads of screws through to conduct the thermals to the 
outside. I'm using these plastic fasteners, two washers we call them, and I need these 75 millimeter ones, and along with them, these screw fasteners, which pull into the base of the tube washers, and that makes the required depth you need to get the right amount of meat to catch into your joists. Fixing into the deck alone will not be enough to prevent wind uplift. So it's important you trace the line of your joists under your roof deck and before you lay your vapour barrier, like I'm doing here. And then again, as you're laying your barrier over the deck, I'm using a permanent marker, the trusted Sharpie. The minimum fixings for my 1.2 metre square boards are shown here. I'm a belt and braces guy when it comes to roofs and wind uplift, so I'll add a few more in, but always catching the joists. We want to screw down using an extended drill bit barrel and look to stop just as you see the plastic top disc begin to pull into a disc shape. So now you know you've gripped into the roof joist below this very thick makeup. We'll stagger our insulation boards and you can consider interlocking boards for larger projects rather than the square edge ones I'm using here. Then we can do the bit that for some reason they all want to avoid, gluing our EPDM membrane down with the contact adhesive. I'm using these 10 litre cans and I need two of them at over £150 each. That's another reason why many want to pay less on water-based glues. But comfort yourself knowing you're saving on all that additional OSB for the second deck that you never needed in the first place. What makes contact adhesive tricky is that unlike the water-based system that I spoke about earlier, you need to adhere both the insulation and the rubber and there's less margin for error therefore. Since once the adhesive becomes tacky, which is what you want, it literally grabs the other glue surface and there's less opportunity for repositioning unless you're right on the ball and organised with your folding down. However, if novices like us can do it for this little house build on this extremely windy and sunny day, the worst possible conditions for contact adhesive, I promise any of you can as well. This isn't an instructional video on how to lay a rubber roof, I'll leave that to the experts, but I'm here to tell you the things to take account of and the reason, based on physics and thermal conductivity laws, why you need to do it this way, directly onto the insulation. Some extra points to mention. I always ask questions when I work with experienced trades. I've also heard some roofers say you shouldn't use an impact driver on your tube fasteners as it can rip through the plastic, instead using a drill driver which is gentler on the torque. Personally I've never had a problem and always use my impact driver but good to know anyway. Also seen roofers filling these tubes with silicon, they're worried about trapped air expanding once the rubber is glued down. There's no need, the great thing about EPDM is it has a slight breathable nature to the rubber compound and that's why it works so well with being adhered directly to our insulation. Any little air bubbles that we do get as novices will gently be able to be creased out over a period of a few weeks. Don't confuse a rubber for a breather membrane. Any moisture will not be able to get out. See my other video on how to do this under a limited height rule to avoid more bad detailing. Please like as it makes a huge difference to me. If you want to talk to me, there's a link here and you can contact me for a conversation on that and hope to see you next time.